God has, has had this spiritual revival across Africa. There has been also change and progress in, in different things. Some of the, the, the fastest growing economies are in Africa. The fastest growing economies in the world are in Africa. The wars and the disease and the epidemics that used to sweep all, uh, across Africa by the grace of God have, have gone becoming fewer and fewer. So God has opened the spiritual doors and he has opened even the natural doors. But the question that I have for you today are we still sitting in the prison? Because God can do the first thing. He can even do the second thing. But only you and I can do the third thing. Amen. Only you and I can actually get up and walk out. God can do all these things for us. But in our mind, we feel that we are still in prison. And we still behave like prisoners. And we still wear prison uh, clothes. And we still have prison ideas, mentality. Does that make sense? I want to share with you just four things very quickly that affect our getting up and walking out of prison. The first, if you have a pen, I want you to write it down. If you have a pen, and a, and a, if you came with a pen and a paper, or if you have where to write down, I just want you to write it down. The first is something called conditioning. Conditioning. Training. Conditioning. How you have been trained. There's a picture I want. I don't know if they can show it. I had given it to the media team. No, the first one. There's a smaller one. Do you see this picture of this elephant? This baby elephant? Can everybody see that? Okay. Can you see the chain on it? Now that chain is, is connecting that, is holding that elephant to that small tree at, in the corner there. And this is the way they train elephants in countries like India and other, where they use elephants for riding and for you know entertainment. They have to train them from the time they are young. They train them by putting those chains on them and tying them to a, uh, a tree or a pole. And so that the elephant, the baby elephant tries to move, it tries to move as much as it can, but it, it, it's tied to the, the, the tree or to the pole. But after some time, the elephant is conditioned, it's trained that it actually stops even trying to get free. It always believes it has a chain on its, on its leg. And so it, even, it stops even trying to, to get free. So the next image is of a larger elephant. Now this is a full grown elephant. This elephant, if it was in this room, it would 
and, and it was tied to a pole it could actually bring down the whole tent era singe besibiddo wanonga mu tent bweti ebesobola okukutula ne tent ne gisa wansi ne gisula but because it has been conditioned for for years since it was a small elephant naye lokubanti ebeta ndekeddu okuvanga ekyali muto okumale banga as long as they put the the chain on the leg kasita esigana no lujegererwayo kumuguru this giant animal ensole nenene stays still esigana mu kifo kimu Does that make sense? So there are things that we are conditioned by. No rachi waliwe bintu bitutendekedwamu that tell us where, how far we can go. Ebitubulira oba ne bitukugira wawe tuyino okukoma oba we tulisobola okulaga. What we can do. Chichi che tusobola okola. What we can accomplish. Chichi che osobola okufuna. And Since from the time we are young we hear those messages we see those those messages sometimes they are from family sometimes they are from parents sometimes they are from school sometimes you just hear it everywhere around you Era buli jona buli jonga tukula tuba tubulira bintu bino kwetolola mu bitundu byetu bera mu kugeza ngamba somero oba mu family mwetu va And those things we hear they go into our into our mind E bintu ebyo byatuulira byingira mu ndowoza za foba mu bwongo and they put up invisible walls even though you are physically grown and physically able to do but those barriers that have been formed in your mind have conditioned you just like that elephant have conditioned us to stay within those boundaries kubanga ne wanku badobo okuzotya ngo ina sobala nokkolo weze zamanyi ebintu ebyo biba byagenda mu bwongo bo biba bikugira okubera ko chewe kolera ngensole iyo so what happens when we give our lives to god we become a new creation the bible says that the old has passed and the new has come so our spirit is renewed uh, no our spirit is regenerated it's a new spirit But our mind is the same. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Ba, Barumi 12 olunyirirwa 2. It says that you have to renew your mind. Wagamba nti oyino kuzza bujja endowoza yo. You have to renew the way you think. Oyino kuzza bujja engeri jolowozamu so that you can prove what god's will is oliokotegere bulunji okwagala kwa katonda chakuli so that you can prove what is god's good and acceptable will oliokotegere ekikirizibwa katondere chakakasibwa okwagala kwenga bwe kuli so if you want to go in this direction no in the future bobo yagala kwa talugendo luno mu future mu maso mu future Then you have to change the way you are thinking about that today. No obo ino kuchusa cholowoza mu byemaso byoyagala ogenda mu olwalero runo. Amen. Let's have an example of um marriage since you're all young people. Gingere je tuleba toka tufune cho kulabira ko ngo obufumbo. If you surround yourself singa wetololwa with people abantu who tell you abakugamba that marriage is bad tobufumbo bubi that it's hard obufumbo buzibu that if you are a woman men are just uh, you know terrible boboli mukazi ne bakugamba anti abasajja bonna babi they are trying to keep you down ne basa ne bagamba anti bajja kunyomanga babelenga bakwesimuliza ke bisoto and if you are a man you have and you, see, you think that women are all uh, trying to what do you call it today detooth is it detooth You think that women are all just looking for you to see what they can get from you? And that's what you're thinking and that's what you're putting in your mind. You are setting yourself, you're setting your 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 direction, your compass. A few years from now when you actually do get married. The things that you have been putting in your mind and thinking are the things that are going to begin to come out. Are we together? You have already set your mind because the Bible says as you are as you think 
So are you. Bible ingabwe gambe ntucholo oza choli no rechendo oza yoba wajite sete seda. So you have already set your marriage today. Kati wabufumbo wabwa wazo butege kango butege sede ero. So if you want to change that, kati wabwa ya galo kuchu secho, then change what you are putting in your mind. O ina kuchu secho yingiza mbongo wabwa. I'll give you another example. Inda kuwe chokula bila kechi dada. Think about finances, money. Lo waza kusente wakubi ya mfuna. Now, young people will, 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 will have this in their mind and it goes around that there is nothing to do, there is no work, there is no, you know, the economy is not good and so there is nothing for me to do. So let me play pool or let me go and watch TV in the, in the cinema, in the, not the, the, in the, yeah. the, the mobile cinema. So somebody else will come. Maybe he will come from India or Pakistan or China. Where the conditions are much, much worse than in Uganda. Because there, if you don't have a, a job, you, don't, you, can, you won't eat anything, you won't have a judge's home where you can go and get some, okay, you, you'll be starving, you'll be hungry. But when you come to Uganda, you see that the land is there. You see the sun is there. You see the rain is there. You see that the food comes. And you think, wow, this is a garden of Eden. And you think, I can do anything here. If I plant something in the ground, it will, in three months, I will have a harvest. I can do anything. So that person who has come from another place will look at the same land which you are looking at and will see an opportunity. Are we together? Where you have seen just a problem they have seen an opportunity. So they will use whatever they have saved in doing all the odd jobs that they have. They will start a business. From that business, they will save every single little penny. And then they will buy the next shop. Then they will bring their family from India or wherever they are from. And then they now uh, save all their money to buy the next shop. They will not spend on anything, not on a wedding, not on a function, not on anything. They will be saving all their money just to keep on expanding. After three years, four years, you will see that they have taken the whole street. And now you are coming and buying from them. And you are coming and taking a loan from them. And they are taking your, la your land as a collateral for the loan. And if you fail to pay the loan, they will take that. But five years ago, this person was worse off than you. Or worse off than me. So how, what is it that was different? Was it that they had more money? Or was it that they had a different mindset? Does that make sense? Yes. Does it make sense? Yes. 
The mind, what you think about something, is what is going to co- is what is going to manifest. So if you want something different to manifest, change what you're thinking. And how do you change what you're thinking? Change what you are putting in your mind. What are you listening to? What are you reading? What are you following? Because what you're putting, if you're putting in your mind just uh, this music and, and a lot of that's what's going to come out. If you are just following things on Facebook and what that's what's going to come out. It, it, will, it will show after some time. If you are if you are surrounding yourself with people who are just wasting time. That's what will come out. I want to show you another picture. Do you see this, do you see this woman? Can you see her? Now if you look at the size of the woman and the size of the uh, weights that she's trying to lift. Do you think she can lift those weights? Do you know how she can lift those weights? Because she has been lifting smaller weights over time. She has been building her capacity to lift bigger weights. So you don't begin by, by very ups, very high in the sky. But you begin with small, a small, small shift. Small, a small shift in your mind. Look around you and say, these people that I'm with all the time, these friends I hang around with, do I like how they look. Do, they li- do I like where they are in life? Because those people are, 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 are um, they are a sign of where, where you're going to be. So if you don't like where your friends are at, if they are all, if you're all on the same at the same space and you're all just wasting time, that's where you're going to be in the next five years. So if you don't like where your friends are, then you should look for people who are where you want to be. People who know something more than what you know. Who have experienced something more than what you have experienced. And begin to, 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 to look at what they are doing. And listen to what they are saying. And slowly by slowly you begin to build your, 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 your capacity. And eventually, you will be able to do a much bigger thing. You will be able to lift a, a bigger weight. Because you have been doing small, small, small changes. I want to show you um, the, next, the next point. Look at uh, John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 5. This is the next, the next point, the next stage. It says, now there was a certain man who, was, who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he 
He said to him, Namugambanti, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming another steps down before me, Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was well and he took up his bed. And so this man had been in this condition 38 years. This is more than some of you have been alive. And he was in a pool and, and that pool would the, an angel would come and stir the pool and, and, and if you'd step in, you would be healed. But for 38 years, he had never managed to step in. Now when Jesus came to him, he asked him an interesting question. He said, do, in, in the Amplified, it says, do you really want to be well? And he could have just said, yes, I want to be well. But instead of answering, he said, no, you know, I don't have anybody. And when the water stirs up, then I have no one to put me in. And that's why I'm, I'm in this condition. And Jesus didn't even continue with that discussion of why don't you have somebody to put you in the water? Why don't you? He just said, get up. Now, that's, that's the next thing I want to, to talk about. There is a, a way that we can, I don't know how you say it in Uganda, to sabotage. To sabotage, is that the word? To sabotage is to to to. to to stop yourself from actually getting what you want. You, you, you think you want something like this man, he thought he wanted healing. But he would sabotage himself so that he wouldn't actually get the healing. Does that, do you understand that? You, to sabotage yourself, you, in your mind you think, oh, this is what I want. But somewhere along the way, when you're trying to get what you want, you are the same person who sabotages yourself from getting what you want. So Jesus, when he, he, he the Bible says that he was watching him. And he was seeing that there is something that is stopping this man from getting in the pool. And maybe he has been watching you. Or watching me. And he sees that there is something that we are actually doing that stops us from getting the breakthrough that we are looking for. How, how, do, how does that work? In some buildings, there's something called uh, a thermostat. It's like a temperature control. Now, you set the temperature in the room. And, it's, and you set it maybe for 24 degrees. Now, if, it, if, the, if the room gets hot, if it goes to 25 degrees, the AC comes on to bring it back to 24 degrees. If the heat, go, if the, the heat goes down and becomes cold, maybe it becomes 18 degrees. The heater comes to put it back to 24 degrees. Does that make sense? So, that thermostat is set to keep you in the same 
temperature or to keep the room in the same temperature so we have things working in our lives we have mindsets or ideas or, or deep deep spiritual beliefs that we don't even talk out of, we don't speak them. But they are there in our, in our minds and in our hearts. And when we try to break out, we sabotage that process of breaking out so that we remain in the same place. Does that make sense? The self sabotage is forces that are working in our lives to keep us at the same place. And years pass, decades pass, and we're at the same place. And somebody comes who's way behind you, and they pass you by, and you don't know why is it that they, they're passing you by and you're stuck in this place. And yet you are doing everything that you think you need to do. But you are stuck and other people are moving. Tonight I want us to, to, to address those things. I want us to... to, to to uproot those things. Because Jesus is looking at you. And he's looking at me. And he's saying, do you really want to be free? And if we really want to be free, there are some things that we need to uproot. Some things, some, some, some beliefs that we need to uproot. Some things that are sabotaging our, our progress. Are we together? I'm going to close in a, in a, in a minute. Modeling. The, the third, the third uh, step is modeling. Mo following. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Follow me as I follow Christ. And he was, this is talking about what I, a bit of what I was saying earlier. Who is it that you are patterning, following after? Are you following after the person on Facebook? You know, these days we have a lot of celebrities in, in Uganda. And the celebrities, you know, they do a lot. They have these very weird, strange lives. And you're going to begin to do the same things that they're doing. And eventually you're going to end up Living the life that they are living. If you're following Pastor Wilson, if you are imitating him as he is imitating Christ, then you are going to end up at the place that Jesus has for you. Because you are following somebody who is following Christ. I want to encourage you that you put someone in front of you. If it's, if it's your Pastor Wilson, who is your pastor? 
Study what he does. Don't just listen to what he's teaching you. Study how he lives. Study his lifestyle. When he wakes up, what does he do when he wakes up? Does he pray first? Does he do exercise? What does he, what he, how is his lifestyle? How does he handle people? How does he handle work? What is his attitude towards work? What is his attitude towards time? What is his attitude towards giving? What is his attitude towards honor? What, how does he pattern his life? And if you study him and follow him, soon you will begin to be like him. Amen. Because he is following Christ. I always have people that I put as mentors. And those mentors can be mentors in my life for sometimes five years, sometimes ten years. But I look at everything those people are doing. And sometimes I don't even know these people. There are people who are, you know, public people and I don't know them, but I follow them, I read their books, I listen to their programs, I follow every, I, I want to know ex everything about them. And as I follow them and as I do what they do. I begin to get the results that they get. So, if you have come here with a need tonight, maybe it's a need in family, maybe it's a need in ministry, maybe it's a need in whatever it is, the need that, the, 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 that, you, that you have. Find somebody who has what you want. And follow them. He's watching you and he's watching me just as he was watching that man at the, at the, at the pool. And he's saying, do you really want to be well? And that just means that the power to change is within your hands. So many times we always feel helpless. We feel like it's out of my hands and it's so and so and so and so. And if so and so would do this, then I would. And if so and so would do this, or if I would get the money, or I would get this. It, we always feel like we are helpless. The answer to what you are searching for is inside. Whatever that thing is that has kept you down, kept you paralyzed, kept you stuck. Maybe it was a death. Maybe it was a death of, of, of a parent. Maybe it was a loss. I am here to tell you that God wants to remove those grave clothes. And he wants to remove those, uh, those, gar those garments of mourning. Just wanting you to talk to God for yourself and and tell him about whatever it is that he has been bringing up into your heart. Because I'm going to ask that even as you pray, whatever it is that the Lord...